Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of I Am Legion for Dying Light 1 and 2. My name is Jason, the creator of the mod, and we're going to go through really quickly into an installation guide on how to get the game running with the latest version of the launcher, along with being able to pull the latest version of the mod and install that with all of its settings. Uh, so if you haven't pulled the latest version of the mod from the Nexus, please head over and grab the latest version of the launcher. In the future, this is the best place to always get the latest and greatest versions of the launcher uh, to get started. Once you have that downloaded, go ahead and extract all of those files to whatever location works best for you. Uh, hopefully it's some place that you'll continue to go back to and continue to launch the launcher in the future. Uh, once you have that downloaded, we're going to go ahead and run the executable. Uh, once that's loaded, it's going to ask you for the location of Dying Light 2. This will always be the case. It's the first thing it's going to ask for. All my software is looking for the exact location of Dying Light 2. This is the same for Epic or Steam. Uh, it's just where that game is actually installed. So we're going to select Dying Light 2. Once we have that selected, it's going to determine that I have not installed the mod. So this is the layout that you should see for the vanilla version of Dying Light 2. Uh, and from here, we can get started. So first and foremost, you can go ahead and launch into Dying Light 2 if you want using the launcher. If you want to bring up the directory at any time, you can use that shortcut below. If you want to bring up Nexus mods and see the latest version of the launcher, please feel free to do so. Uh, if you want to check out the Patreon, huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters. Thank you guys so much for supporting me over the last year and some. Uh, I truly appreciate it. Thank you guys. Uh, for the mod manual, make sure to check that out as well if you have any questions about specific features. I now have three separate pages uh, for that, including a basic you know, mod summary, which then you can dive into specific features, or you can dive into, dive into the mod config tool uh, overall to find more information there as well. Uh, so for this next part, we're going to go ahead and install the latest version of the mod. Uh, if you want the latest news, say that you're enjoying playing Dying Light 2 Vanilla and you just want to keep up with where the, where the mod is currently at, at any time you can just follow the news over here on the right. So let's go ahead and launch the installer and get started. As default, Survivor is going to be selected, but at any time, uh, you can go ahead and select the different difficulties. Casual is the best way to play, even if you are playing vanilla and you want less volatiles in the world and just want to be more focused on the parkour and exploration. Casual is the way to go. Insanity is the most fun to play uh, by any means at this point. Uh, and then I am Legion content. Please be aware that this is the version or the light version of the mod. The idea is, is that anytime you can toggle off any of the inventory and trader uh, items through the mod config, uh, to just play with the new AI and the new models uh, and different AI types and difficulty without all the new features uh, such as, you know, the lighting overhaul, the new weapons, flamethrowers, all that good stuff. Next, you can go over to modules. These are hot swappable at any point, so you can select any one of these uh, and install it with the mod. Please be aware for the map changes, that is still a work in progress. There is still a known bug uh, with that that causes an issue with Sophie's quest there at the start. So if you're still Starting out on a new game, just know that it won't be you won't be able to play through the first part uh, of the game without running into a bug. At any time, you can go in here and unselect map changes, run the installer again, play through any bugs that you might have through the map changes, and then at any point reinstall it if you're enjoying defending uh, the bazaar. For the events, I've also released the Halloween edition of I Am Legion Reborn, which in, that featured uh, killer clowns and vi vampires. Vampires are actually pretty fun, and I'm going to continue to support these events throughout the year, so at any time you can toggle these on and off as you go. Next is the Pathway system, which a lot of exciting updates coming for the Pathways coming up, especially for the Patreon supporters. Uh, and at any time you can select any one of these to find out what those give you uh, when you start the game. So this is specific to when you're starting a new game uh, and you can either skip the prologue or start before the prologue um, and you'll get these new items when you start the game. Also the language support and any time you can select any one of these six languages. I apologize the special characters have still not been solved for so they're still missing special characters but you do have some hopefully uh, useful translations there inside the game for the mod. At any time you can click the translation sheet down here at the bottom to go in to see what the community has set up for the translations for any and all objects inside the game uh, that are dependent on the different uh, languages. So if you want to check those out, please uh, feel free to jump on there and see what uh, see what the community has been able to translate so far. If you have a moment, uh, feel free to review and update those if you see some that are incorrect. 
It's a work in progress always. Uh, next, you can head over to the summary. So this should then explain everything that you've selected throughout the course. So if we've selected a couple of these different pathways, it should summarize. Once we determine this, these are the settings that we want, you can go ahead and hit install. Once it's done installing, it's gonna let us know. It's gonna have a pop-up say installation is successful. And it's also gonna show in the bottom left corner uh, that the game version and the latest version is installed. Uh, from here, you can go back to and click launch installer and you will now see a different background here uh, and you will be able to launch into the game with uh, the mod installed fully. Uh, at any time, there are still some loops here that I'm trying to work out. So for example, making the optimized interface while also supporting uh, new features as they come. Just be aware for this one, you are gonna want to uh, run this launcher again in the future uh, to get access to the other tools. So I have made these specific to where they're looking to make sure that the mod is properly installed. And I've not fully worked out that loop yet to make sure that uh, these things fire without causing a couple of looping issues for everyone. Uh, so still work in progress for sure. But please be aware that there is now, because of the increasing amount of reports of bugs um, and the data mismatch version, there is the new launch multiplayer pack option if you've installed the mod. Uh, at any time you can click on this and the intention here is to be able to very quickly allow you to uh, send and update multiplayer uh, for the mod and for really for all of Dying Light 2. Uh, this was also a problem in Dying Light 1, so it's a common issue, uh, but basically it looks down to the bite of every single file in the game to determine if you're playing the exact same version and if it's off even slightly, uh, you can't join each other on co-op. So let me summarize really quickly how to use this new feature. Uh, inside the Dying Light 2 directory is the I Am Legion co-op folder. Uh, inside this folder, uh, you can create co-op packs and then also validation files. Uh, so I'll go ahead and clear that out so that we can start fresh so you can see how this would work. Uh, so if we go over here and click Launch Multiplayer Pack, it's going to let us know that there's no validation files found. That's fine. Uh, up here in the top left is a drop down where you'll select what role you're trying to play with your friends. So if you're hosting the game, go ahead and set yourself to host. Uh, if you are joining someone else's game, go ahead and select one of the player slots and all your other friends can do the same. Uh, so in this case, we're gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and pretend to be the host. We're gonna generate a validation file. So it's gonna go ahead and crawl through uh, and create a validation file for me and then also determine whether or not other players have been detected or not. Uh, so say, uh, for example, you're trying to play with your buddy, he's designated himself as player two. He'll do the same thing of running uh, generate file validation on his side. Uh, and once he's created that file validation, uh, he can actually then go over here and say, create co-op pack. And when he says create co-op pack, what it's going to do is, is it's going to wrap up uh, the co-op uh, validation file and then also all the mods that he has installed. So for you, the host, he can send you this zip file and you can determine uh, using this whether or not it's compatible or not. So you should see any of the mods that he has installed and you should also see his validation file. What you do with this as the host, so uh, switching back to my role as host here, uh, you're going to take and get his data pack and you're going to go over here to the Dying Light 2 folder and then just extract these into your Dying Light 2 folder. So you can just drag and drop these uh, in. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing this with the PH files because that's going to replace your own. Uh, this is really so that the host can send the other players uh, the co-op pack. So after the host has set everything up, you can hit create co-op pack and then send this out to the other players so that they can immediately drag and drop their uh, or this ph folder into their files so they immediately have everything that you have on your side so say for example uh your co-op buddy sent you your pack and you're the host uh, say, for example, he's got some uh, mod installed to Vortex that he forgot about that he installed like last year, uh, and it's just kind of sitting there inside of his folder. Uh, once you send this over, or he sends this over to you, and you've got it put inside this folder, you can hit Validate Player Files. And once you run Validate Player Files, it's going to let you know whether it's a match or not a match. And if it's not a match, it's going to tell you exactly which file does not match your system. Um, so at any time, if you install a new mod, so say that you had some new mod that you found on the Nexus that you wanted to install, uh, and you've added this to your um, to your PH uh, source folder, 
At any point, you'll just generate a new validation file for you, the host. Make sure on the dropdown that you're labeled as host and then generate that new validation file. And then not only is it gonna let you know um, when you run this validation uh, that there's a mismatch, uh, it will also let them know. Uh, so in this case, I actually, I, I actually changed the name, but it's gonna let you know uh, as you have other players join uh, that you've installed a new mod and you forgot to send it to everyone. If you wanna just send it to everyone, all you have to do is hit that create co-op pack and then head back over to your Dying Light 2 folder into your I Am Legion co-op folder and you'll have that pack file sitting there ready to go. And you can go ahead and send this out to everybody else so that they have all the latest and greatest files at their disposal. All right, so that is the setup for the multiplayer pack. At any time, we can close this back down. Uh, and just so you guys are aware, to uninstall the mod at any point, all you have to do, if you've run through the process properly to where you've run the launcher, you've installed properly, if you ever get an update in the future, an update button is going to pop up here and you can just click update I am Legion Reborn. Uh, and what it's gonna do is immediately gonna install with all your selected options so you don't have to do anything past that point. And that way it makes sure that you have the latest and greatest version. Please be aware of this green uh, version compatibility. If you launch the game and you notice that this is now 1.13.2 and it's red, uh, that means because I haven't had a chance to update the mod. So please be aware that when you hit play Dying Light 2, it's going to do a pop-up that says you have an incompatible version. Please be aware that that's it, that is to help protect your save game to make sure that you don't accidentally bake in corrupted data. Uh, I want to make sure that you guys have good backups so you can also launch the save game tool at any time along with the mod config uh, so you can set things up. However, say a new update comes out or you want to uninstall the mod. At any time, all you have to do is click this I Am Legion Reborn logo up here at the top and it's going to go in the background and update and and replace and restore all of the files that are needed to revert this back to vanilla Dying Light 2. So by clicking that, you are now on Di vanilla Dying Light 2. You can launch the game and play the vanilla, the vanilla version of the game without any issue. Uh, if you have any issues, please let me know, but this should restore everything and make it easy to play. If you run into any issues at any time, all you do is run file verification through Epic or Steam to make sure that your files are updated properly for Dying Light 2. Should you decide you're watching the news and you see that there is an update that I've just updated to the latest version, so updated to 1.13.2, all you have to do is go up here and press this button again, and it should let you know that there's an update available. You download the latest update. Once it's installed, you hit play, and you're good to go. All right, guys, thank you so much for jumping on. Huge, huge appreciation to all the supporters of the mod. Been a lot of crazy work over the last year. Uh, please subscribe to the channel for any upcoming updates that are coming out. I have lots of things planned. Uh, please stay tuned for updates for the launcher as those will allow you to get the latest and greatest changes as I get more of the mod config and save game tools integrated into the launcher itself. Uh, and please don't forget to endorse uh, through Nexus Mods. And if you'd like to join as a Patreon supporter, I appreciate it. And if not, please join the Discord community so you can see the latest and greatest changes uh, as we continue to go. Thank you guys so much. Happy gaming, and I'll talk to you next time.